the guy that 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 we're going to introduce you to and and mark has actually been a guest here on the show and he's a great guy he's a great photographer he's a great author and he's got a brand new book now i got to see i got a a sneak peek of it Mm -hmm. you know he sent me the pdfs and i got to look at it oh but i put my cans on yeah yeah. Uh, but oh my gosh this so many people need this book because this is kind (laughs) of the missing link for a lot of people because there's a lot of people and i think some of the authors that we're talking about Mm -hmm. they know how to run their camera but they're missing the art of photography so let's bring on mark Hey, Mark, can you hear me? I can. Hey, Scott, oh, there Eric. You are. Hey, All right. Scott. Hey, how you Boom. doing? I'm awesome. So great to be back with you guys. Okay, can I say something? You're wearing you're wearing the name of your book on your shirt. Yeah, there it is. You oh, know, why have shameless. I never thought, why have I never thought to do that? <laughs> there it is. It's even on the cell shameless phone. Shameless self-promotion, right? Yep. Hey, but you right. know what? You wrote a great book. It needs all the, all the, yeah, everybody needs to know about this book. So I'm with you, dude. You did a great job on gathering such brilliant people uh, to come together for this. So tell us about the book, Rook. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, you know, I've been working on this book for about 40 years. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I literally, this is my fourth book, but literally this has sort of been like my life's work to try to understand, well, what are, what's the anatomy of creativity and how can you increase it? So, you know, going back to what you guys were just discussing, you know, this whole idea of who do you listen to, who do you look to, there's so many opinions about creativity. I went to 12 of the most remarkable creative people that I could find in various different fields and interviewed them to try to find out, well, what worked for them, but also what you guys were talking about, what are some of the common misconceptions that people have? Yeah, what, what are so, those? Yeah, what would be the common misconceptions? You know, the number, okay, the number one misconception is that you're kind of either born with a creative gene or you're not. And that some people are creative and some people aren't. And I contend, and having talked to all these different people, that's not true at all. Creativity is something you develop, just like you were talking about, Scott. You have to develop your eye for photography. Maybe you're not born with it, but you have to find a way to discover what makes a good photograph. I, I, I totally yeah. do that. I, I agree because there are per- certain people that are obviously born and they're talented. They're just talented yeah. musicians, they're talented singers, they're talented photographers. But there's a lot of people where it's kind of like a muscle. They need to, they mm-hmm. need to, uh, yeah, it's a, and they need to, and they can get better. Well, even those people born with the natural talent, they still have to hone that creativity. They still have to, you know, uh, practice it. Like, you know, like you're talking about, build the muscle. Well, what are other, right. what are other misconceptions? There's, two, there's a secret, if you don't mind, Eric, I could dive yeah, yeah. in on that. I actually talk about how you hone that muscle. Should I give that away now or later in the talk? No, tell <laughs> yeah, us yeah, now. Tell us. Now that you put it out there, you got to tell us. All right. All right. So real quickly, there are five stages to creativity. The first one is visualization. Now, Ansel Adams said the whole key to a photograph, what makes a photograph different than a snapshot Mm, is you first visualize it. Mm -hmm. You get the idea in your mind, whether it's in a split second, like Henry Cartier-Bresson did, he could visualize something in a split second and press the shutter at the right moment. Or maybe it took nine hours for the clouds to line up like Ansel Adams did. It's still a visualization. But how do you strengthen your visualization? How do you know what to imagine? Ah, that's the secret (laughs) sauce, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And here's the secret sauce. You go look, and this is what you're also talking about. Look at great art. Look whether it doesn't matter if it's music I know a photographer, Joseph Holmes, who's a fantastic landscape photographer. And I said, what was your inspiration? He said, the Beatles. (laughs) He went to the last Beatles concert at Candlestick Park in 1966, and he found it so energizing that it just shot him out into the world as a photographer. Wow! You never know where you're going to get that inspiration, but you have to find it from somebody who knows what they're doing like you guys were discussing. Yeah. Wow. So if you if you want to feed your creative inner beast, <laughs> the best advice I can give you is be looking at art. Joey L, where's his inspiration? But Rembrandt, 
And, and you know, every one of these, uh, these fantastic photographers and authors and musicians told me the same thing, that you can feed the inner beast by looking at art and, and taking art in, because that builds a library in your mind that you then, when you see something, you go, wow, that's pretty cool. I could do something like that, too. That's just one little tidbit. Wow. So it did. What are, what are the tools? Do you need a set of tools uh, for creativity? Like, what are the kind of building blocks of this? There's five things. So the first one is visualization. There's five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got to make sure I got the right number of fingers in. Visualization, you got to get it in your mind's eye. You got to, you've got an idea before. Then you have to know your tools. And in photography, you have to know your equipment. Like you're saying, do you, is it the 50 millimeter, the appropriate lens maybe not maybe the 85 is more appropriate well that's knowing your tools right uh, you're not going to shoot everything with a fish eye you're not going to shoot everything with a 400 telephoto you have to know your tools and so that's super important then you have to once you visualize you know your tools you've got to work your craft you got to get out there and do it now listen yes as silly, silly as that seems there's a major disconnect that I bump into is, like, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not so good at writing. Well, how often do you write? Oh, uh, well, I'm thinking about it. Listen, Stephen King sits down. He writes 2,000 words a day. 2,000 words a day, right? You're going to get good at it. And it's the same thing with photography. If you are shooting 10 images a week, how good are you going to get? If you shoot a thousand, you, you're going to probably start improving, <laughs> right? Man, as you are. As you, I'm loving this. Yeah, you are it on it. Yes. Yeah. You, you can't no, sit yeah, and, this is, this and watch on. YouTube videos and and wonder why your craft isn't improving because you have to work your craft. Yeah. Then the next stage is editing. You have to edit. But here's a big trick on that one: don't edit in the middle of working your craft. Again, this is this was gleaned from that was actually from David Campbell. You may not recognize the name. He's the father of Beck. But listen to this. He has produced or been involved with 425 gold and platinum albums. 425 gold and platinum albums. Okay? This mm -hmm. dude has some cred, right? He said, "Don't stop yourself when you get into motion. Don't Shoot yourself in the foot and start going, oh, I'm no good. This really sucks. Keep the flow going because it will build up momentum. Then when you go back later, you do your editing. But don't edit when you're in the process of doing your working your craft. Absolutely, That's Man. another big misconception. You are so right. You know, I, that that happens to me when I'm writing a book. Yeah. Like, like it, I, I have to get in a zone. And, and yeah. I, I plug along, but all of a sudden, when you start doing it every day, you get into a zone and all of a sudden I am like, things are flying off my fingers. And, it, it, and you do have to get into a rhythm and, and a yeah. zone. And, and they joke about it here at my office is like, oh, he's in the zone. But if I'm in the zone, man, I can just go and I'm loving it. I'm having fun and the creative. But if I were to stop and go back and start rereading and editing my, it would destroy the zone. It would kill well, it. Absolutely. It, totally does, yeah. it would kill it. Well, it's like, it's like when you're out on a shoot, you don't edit your work when you're out on a shoot. You just capture, right? Right. Capture, 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 ca whether it's video or stills, you just want to get that stuff in there. And then when you go back to the studio, now you're going to do your editing, totally separate process. When you cross those two over, you're headed for trouble. So uh -huh. uncross them. That's the, that stage of editing. And then the final stage is sharing your work out into the world. And by that, I mean in many different ways, not just on social media, but get your work out there. One of the most, <laughs> to me, the most important things about being a photographer is hanging your own work, right? Yep. Get prints made with beautiful frames and hang that work. Don't just let it live in a computer somewhere. That's not gonna satisfy your creative urges, right? 
All the, all the pictures uh, in Eric's office and on my office, they're all our own stuff hanging on the walls. Yeah. I've seen them. Like, they're beautiful. And and Eric's got rockets going off on his yeah. walls. Mine looks like one big explosion. This looks like one big explosion, his whole <laughs> office. But no, you're right. I All of this stuff is just so speaks to me. I love this. This and your book is awesome. It's 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 this in a book, and but that's it's, it's so, so great, it's de so dead spot on. Is and I think that's what happens is people they kind of pick and choose those five things, and they kind of focus on one, or they don't put it all together. And you know, the, the one up front, the visualization, I think, is where a lot of people are. Uh, they're just they're passing right over that one of being able to you visualize. Know, well, that is the that is the real secret. You know, I I've interviewed, I don't know, probably 100 photographers at least. And every one of them brings that point up visualization. Chase Jarvis made the point of, look, when you go out on a shoot, don't even look through your camera at first because that mm -hmm. already constricts your your vision. Go around and look at the scene and see where the light is and what you know, what triggers something. Then get your camera out. And too many of us go boom, put a camera right in front of our face. We've already reduced our view down to this tiny little opening, right? It's this big when it should be this big. Because wow. that's, right? So, and that's true not just in photography, but that's true in any creative field. Get your visualization, get your vision there first. Another big trick, big tip, is get a notebook and use it. I am... I am the most notebook happy person you've ever seen because I'm always jotting down my ideas. You know, you have those flashes of inspiration and if you don't put them down somewhere, they just fly right out the window. Mm -hmm. You they go, do. Well, what's, yeah. what was that idea? Well, we both do that. I yeah, know. We, we, have, we both do that. Yeah, well, the notes on our phone. I use the notes <laughs> app on my iPhone. That's what I use. And, and, and it's just constantly full of stuff. I have, I have stuff. hundreds of notes, <laughs> not of individual notes. I have actual notes that have names and then inside yeah. those all kinds of ideas because you never know when inspiration is going to strike. Yeah, like I have that yeah. with, uh, you know, rocket photos shoots that I'll have or Milky Way or landscape. And I've got different subfolders for everything when you'll just get like an idea in your head and it'll pop in. You got to write yeah. it down. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the other thing is, you know, I bump into a lot of people who say, oh, I'd really like to write a book, you know. OK, why don't you start with writing your own notebook? Right. That's where my books begin. Scott, you you probably do the same thing. My books begin with a notebook my, and my jotting books, down ideas. Well, that's funny. My my life tours come from that. So my life tours come out of that. When it's time for me to do a book, I actually write an outline. I'm it's old school, man. Outline and I, but it's kind of nice. I write an outline. Here's what's going to yeah. be in that's, chapter one. Here's absolutely. what's going to be in chapter two. Because then it, it, it's the blueprint for the book. And I always you tell new it. writers, like, write, write an outline. But my tours come from my notes. And then my my books come from writing an outline. Uh, I hey, let's we're going to jump to break, Mark. Do not go sure. away. We want you to stick around. But but I want I want to tell people we didn't really read the tagline for your book because it is called Create. But I think the tagline really describes what the book is about. It's called Create: Tools from Seriously Talented People to Unleash Your Creative Life. And there it is right there. He's holding the book cover right there. And oh, I didn't realize I was holding it uh, up. I'm sure it was an, uh, an accident. <laughs> anyway, when, when we come back, we're going to be talking more with Mark uh, just right after this. So don't go away. We're going to yeah, – I love what you're saying. Say oh, more yeah. of this when we come Absolutely. back. Hey, we still have Mark. Mark's with us. And Mark is author of the book, Create Tools from Seriously Talented People to Unleash Your Creative Life. That's – the cover of the book right there. Before you, we go any further, everybody watching, go order this book. Don't go order another book on camera settings. You want something that'll actually inspire and change and motivate you? Go get the book Create. Uh, I'm sure it's at Amazon, the world's biggest bookstore, yep. and yep. Barnes and Noble, and anywhere cool books are sold. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's so, in all those outlets. You can for sure just type in my name, Mark Silver, on Amazon. It'll come right up. And it's S I L B E R. And, yes, and it's M A R C. M A R C. There, there it is, Boom. right there. So just go yes. order it right now. Look at that. What a deal! Thirteen bucks. It'll I be know. the it'll be the best thirteen bucks that you've spent on your photography in a long time. Go order it. Get the Kindle version if you can't wait to get it shipped to you. It's ten bucks and forty nine mm -hmm. cents. There is nothing in photography that you can't even get a, a, a replacement lens cap for 10 bucks this is something that will actually <laughs> make a difference it's such a, a good book. 
So, hey, Mark, stuff. can you tell us, because uh, uh, I know that you delved into this into the book, can you tell us some simple ways that you can cr increase your creativity for everybody? Absolutely. Well, I've given you two of them already. So yep. go to museums a lot, look at art, use your notebook. How about this one? This one will probably surprise you. What if I told you that there's a way to increase your creativity by 60% that's totally accessible to anyone and costs nothing. And it's not something you take. Oh, it's not a pill I'm or out. a drug or oh, anything. It's not a pill. In fact, it's probably one of the most healthy things you can do. If I told you that, you might be surprised. But the answer is walking. There was a, re there was a research project done at Stanford University in 2014 where they found, and they did test cases, that people who went out and did walks every day were 60% more creative than those who just sat in a chair. Now, how simple is that? And I have a whole chapter about walking because there's more to it than meets the eye. You know, you, when you walk, you've got to let your attention go out. Don't go on a walk with your iPhone in front of you and look down at the screen because that's defeating the whole purpose. But that simple little tool and we do this as photographers. We go for a walk with our camera, which is awesome. And that's a very healthy thing to do. But just get out there every single day, especially in our digital age, because we become so prone to staring at one screen or another. Get out there and look at the world and take it in. Leonardo da Vinci recommended this. He also said, when you walk, take your notebook with you and make sketches and notes of things that, again, spark your imagination. How about that for a simple creative that tool? Is, yeah, that is awesome. And that, you know, a good segue there is if you want to get out walking with your camera, yes. we have an event for you to sign up for, right? Ah, the wow. photo walk. Right. Yeah, the Worldwide, yeah. Photo, worldwide walk, photo Walk, the 12th walk. annual Worldwide Photo Walk is coming up October 5th. You can walk around with other people who will watch your back while you walk. Yeah. You can take your camera, get outside. So if you haven't yeah, been walking, walk. you can that day you'll be 60% more creative. <laughs> I love this go. idea. Absolutely. That is such great research that I never heard that before, Mark. That is amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. It's in the book. Hey, another big misconception is I don't have the time. I don't have enough time. I wrote a whole chapter on how to dispel that because what most people do, unfortunately, they don't view time like they view money. You know, if you're going to save up for a trip, you obviously have to put it somewhere and economize a little bit. If you keep blowing everything, you're never going to have the money left over to go on that incredible trip that you want to take. Time is the same way. If you blow it, if you waste it, it's like junk food, you know, you can have junk time which is just, you know, most of us waste too much time on, a on the computer in front of a TV. If you allocate and budget your time correctly and view it as an investment or as a resource that you have, then it will pay dividends. And so I have, I have a whole chapter, including how to really take your time and put it on a piece of paper and find out that you probably have about 20 hours a week left over for your creative activities that's just sitting there. It's like the quarters under your couch. It's just sitting <laughs> there. <laughs> there you go. I love that analogy. It's like the quarters under your couch. There's time quarters everywhere. They're I, just hidden all over the I place. I think there's Maybe a remote. I think my Apple TV remote is somewhere under my somewhere, couch. Somewhere, right? Well. That, that little one you know, that's always getting lost. Yeah, the lost. little black one yeah. is so awful. Yeah. yeah. It's like our socks. App. They just go, they go into the, some evaporation process in, into your, your dryer. They do. So, hey, Mark, but, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, I was going to say one of the th most fascinating things was finding these different people. So in your previous note, you know, on break, you were talking about Mark, who is a motorcycle rider. Well, one of the people I interviewed is Keith Code, who anybody in the motorcycle world immediately will recognize that name. He's the number one. Uh, he has a school called the California Superbike School that teaches not only the biggest and most worldwide classes, but teaches uh, people like Tom Cruise and, you know, all, all these incredible celebrities how to ride bikes, Brad Pitt. And anyway, I interviewed him and he 
came up with this idea that you must always look at the amount of attention that you have. Every person has a given amount of attention. And this is really important for photographers. If you have to invest, let's, he uses an analogy, you have $10 worth of attention and you have to invest 10, you have to invest $9.50 of your attention on your camera, you've got 50 cents left over for your other creative <laughs> skills, right? Yeah. But what if you get so good and so fluid with your camera where you're only having to invest 25 cents in your camera, you've got $9.75 left over for your creativity. This is a huge thing. That's why you got to know your equipment so well, as Bob Holmes says, that you your camera doesn't get in the way of your of your photograph. And I think a lot of people do that. They, their camera gets in the way of the photograph. Uh, Mark, can instead you, of can you say that yeah. again? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. That was good. How Mark, many? <laughs> I, I swear I could listen to you talk all day. You're such an interesting and engaging guy, and this must have been such a fascinating journey writing this book. I'm still having the journey. You know what it is, Scott? Now that I've released it, I'm getting the feedback. And what I find are, you know, I'm seeing where it resonates with people, like when I give a talk. And one of the places that I saw that it resonated, and I'll just throw this out, is I said, you know, what we need to do is create a creative movement. You know, planet Earth could use that spark of inspiration. And what if we, what if we put ourselves together and actually began a whole new creative movement. Of course, you're doing that. Many of us are doing that, but what if we had an overall umbrella for creativity? I'll just throw that idea out and see what happens. I love yeah, that idea. You, well, you know what great. else too? Creativity, photography, it brings people together. Music, mm -hmm. it brings people together all over the world. We have so many things that we have in common. We actually have around the world with everybody, we have way more in common than we do not in common. Right. Absolutely. And, and things like creativity and art and all it really, these are the things that bring people together. These are important mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And, and that's why I think being a more creative person, living a more creative life. And the thing that's going to stick with me forever today, Mark, is the $10 analogy. Yeah. Isn't you, that spend, cool? you spend nine. I'm going to have to steal that one. I'm going to have to put it on a shirt. Nine fifty. Who was that said that, Mark? Does somebody said that to you or his name is Keith Code and I have Oh the motorcycle, yeah, wrote, the motorcycle yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, he wrote a book called The Twist of the Wrist, which is the Bible of, of the motorcycle world. And he he let me put that section of the book in my book. So you'll read that whole little quote in my book. Wow, that is so great. Yeah, it's it's yeah. and it's such a great analogy because that's exactly with photography. When you start getting when you release yourself of being so focused on the technical and you can invest more time in the creative, that's really where your photography goes up. Yeah, that's really it where is. you see your work really starting to shine. All right, I, I'm going to go do something. So Mark sent me the PDF of the book, uh, but I'm going to go buy it right now. Well, you're the man. I want to get the I want to get the print version. I still love print. I'm still a fan of print, and I want to find. Uh, here it is, right here. And, and I'm going to get the, I'm gonna get the paper back. Oh, that would be, I would love that. Bye now. Done. Boom. All right. It's on its way. It's arriving September 9th with free prime delivery. Woo. Place yeah. your order. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm that... telling you, this, this book will change anyone's life because, listen, yeah. here's the other thing about creativity. It's not about just what we do with our cameras or if we write. It's about your whole life, as you said, being a creative parent. Chris Burkhart, I think we all know who yep, he is. Sure, right? of course. The phenomenon on Instagram, yeah, I interviewed yeah. him. And he talked about how to foster creativity with your children. What a cool subject, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And gave the tips on how to do that. So having a creative life means all across the boards. As a matter of fact, the original title of this book was The Art of Living, because I wanted to emphasize that the creativity can go into your into your life itself. So if you're going to be a better photographer, it would make sense to expand that creative process in all parts of your life. Like you, Scott, you know, playing music and all the creativity that you have enabled and empowered us to do. I can't thank you enough. Every time I turn around, I'm 
I'm using something I read from one of your books. <laughs> you're you're no, very I, kind. I'm being totally honest. <laughs> it's true. Well, and you know what? That's a wonderful okay. thing. So here, here's what people need to do. Yes, you should you should buy Mark's book, but really what you need is some new camera gear. Is, <laughs> that's hey, you what, get that new Canon no, lens. I'm telling no, you, your photography is going to be great. I just bought a lens. Now I feel bad. I feel like I invested poorly. <laughs> How about this for some new well, camera Well, it's a tool. Gear. It's a tool. Here's you my need Leica the tools. From, from art school. It was Ooh. my Leica M2. And this camera accompanied me everywhere. It's, isn't it a, just a beautiful thing? It's a it, work is, of, it is beautiful. It is a work of art. Uh, there is something special about Leica cameras. You can always tell a really successful author because they have a Leica camera. <laughs> and as Eric will tell you, I do not have a Leica. I know that they're awesome. I've never met someone that has a Leica that isn't crazy about it. But, uh, well, hey, Mark, we have to do some giveaways. But thank you so much for taking the yeah. time to drop in and, thank and, you and tell us about your book. Yeah, that is awesome. I can't wait to get you to sign my printed copy. And uh, you are an awesome guy. We love having you on here. And as you know, anytime you're in Florida, we will clear the decks to get you back on the show. I'll you be are, there. You are a delight. There. You are an awesome person. You are so, <laughs> I'm so inspired. We're just doing an yeah. interview and I feel like I want to go shoot. I want to go spend my $10 wisely. So thank you very much, Mark. Thank, thank you so you, much Scott, for joining. Yeah, yeah thanks for Take thanks care. Thank you guys best for wishes. joining me around the world. Yeah, we got everybody's awesome. everybody's watching yeah, from all over all today. Over so go to your local bookstore wherever it is and pick up a copy of this awesome book. Thanks again, Mark. Thank you. All right, we got some giveaways. Yeah, we, we have some giveaways. winners. So, so the landscape book. Yay. We have AJ Grace. You've won the landscape book, and which is a awesome book if you want to get inspired about photography, about landscapes, and landscapes. then um, the platypods going to Peter Holdman. You've won the Platypod. Just uh, contact uh, Christina in the chat, and she'll get you hooked up with those prizes. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, we have run way over time. We are 13 minutes over, but honestly, it was worth it. Oh, absolutely. I swear I love that guy. I mean, it is. Like, he everything is... he's talking about, you're like, yes. Yes, yes. That's like a YouTube video yep. you'd watch and be like, yeah, yes. I need to listen to that. That guy knows what he's talking about. That's Not somebody I want to follow. Oh, you should take the 50 portrait. For, uh, no. Shoot it down low. There are, there are people that shoot. I don't want to say. I've seen shots with the 50 that are awesome. It is true. It I have is seen true. portraits of the 50. But can I tell you something? I would never tell a friend who's getting into photography, shoot a 50. Never. I would for say portraits. there are people who are really, really good. And you know what? Like people will say, hey, Joe McNally shoots a 24 to 70. He's shooting wide angle all the time. You're not Joe McNally. Joe McNally is a special breed. He's Joe, honed it. He could he's he could take it. a coconut like yep. remember the professor on yeah he's uh, got the he's got the muscle Gilligan's Island right. Joe could take a coconut and hollow it out and make a camera and take a better picture than any Joe of us could are do stuff ever going to take. Never do. Yeah. <laughs> so the fact that somebody can do it doesn't mean that I would recommend it to anyone to do. Correct. At some point in your life, people get in this thing where they go, you know what? I'm going to use a 50. It's an exercise. But if you said you want to make somebody look beautiful, I would say run the hell away from a 50. Get, Just shoot because you with, could do something and, doesn't mean you should. Boom. I'm going to leave you with this final thought. <laughs> you will find people on YouTube and everywhere else that will say, A, you should never shoot with a 50, and B, you should shoot with a 50. But here's what you will never find. Someone that says you should not shoot portraits with an 85, or someone that says you should not shoot portraits with a 70 to 200. 200 yeah. So there's a whole group of lenses that people, they're considered they portrait call, they lenses. They call them portrait lenses. When you get to 85, <laughs> it is now portrait lens. They'll even say, what's the best portrait lens? The 85 will pop up all the time. You won't have anybody. I've never, I can tell you, I'm not saying it's never been done. I've never seen someone ever write, you shouldn't use an 85 for portraits. Anyone that you've actually, their work is good. No, even work bad. I've never seen anyone. True. I have I'm not sure. read I'm someone. I'm sure we could find it. So I'm if, sure we could find it. That's, there are a few things that the world is in agreement about. 85 and longer for portraits, portraits. is one of them. 50, can you take it? You could take a 50 with a, you could take portraits with a 14 millimeter. You can do it. And there's people that have done it that have done very well. Would I ever recommend to a friend to do it? Heck no. And not heck's not the word I wanted to use. If you're uh, starting out. Right, because exactly. Because you haven't honed the craft right. like Joe McNally has. You spend 40 years behind the lens? Yeah. You want to pull out a 14? You want to do a fisheye portrait? You sure, go, go Joe. 
Hey, by the way, just one one thing about Joe. You know, Joe did a thing at Photoshop oh, World yeah, called uh, right. An Evening with Joe McNally. Yeah, yeah. It was magical. I, I, saw, I, I had to do Midnight Madness. I thought, I'm going to go sit in for five minutes and I got to go get ready because I knew I had a bunch to do. I could not get up. I could physically not. Larry Becker was sitting right in front of me. And Larry's like, don't you have to go? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Larry, don't you have to go? Larry's the host of Midnight Madness. I'm on the panel. <laughs> yeah. And, and I literally, I could not get up to go. It was so good. Joe is just, you know, he is, he is a national treasure of photography. He really is. But he does those five things. So you can see that he does those five things. Oh, like yeah. He can see it. He visualizes he it. He sees it. He, but he is, I would say also, that Joe is a tremendously talented, creative-wise person. Yes. Joe comes up with ideas, and, yes. then, and then he calls Linda Mastro, his, his wonderful, wonderful pr producer, who's been with him for many, many years. And then he has someone, like Joe will say, I need two elephants, and they need to be in the desert, and I need a showgirl, and I need this. And Lynn somehow makes it happen. She is yeah. um, just an but amazing... But then they go out and actually do it. They do it. Know. They don't talk about it. They don't yeah. read about it. Anyway, thank you guys yeah, for listening. Awesome. Big thanks to, to Mark Silber for jo joining yeah. in. And thanks to my crew who are all staying after here because we ran over now by 17 minutes. Yes. And, and, uh, we have, and, and Mike is now... Mike was uh, helping with the show yes, today, Mike right? Yeah, Mike was helping with the switching. All right, you know, and yeah. Dark Request Dark was right request behind him. Speaking of Dark Request, him. don't forget to go onto Instagram and yeah. follow the it's Digital Surgeon. The Digital Surgeon, which is Dark Request. There he is, the Digital Surgeon. Look at those right. laser beams. He's at 422 followers, so we, we have a little, a little bit to make up to get him to his thousand. So tell your friends. But I'm telling you what, he's but a good you know photographer. Who, who is? He's a very good videographer. You know who is if you follow underscore Juan underscore Alfonso. Juan Alfonso over a thousand and he's got some look at look that at stuff. that he's still content and look at these shots yeah. so so uh, did you tell people you were out doing a class on yeah, this yeah 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 we did yeah Eric was yeah. out in the in the middle of nowhere yeah, we showed some stuff last and, week uh, and that's some behind request. the scenes stuff that uh, yeah. look at that stuff that Juan underscore Juan Alfonso. I've seen some of Eric's finals ooh they're crazy look at these things. Yeah, what? we got some great stuff last Is that week. a rocket going off over there? That is a What's rocket. What's that doing on That's your page? It's a plume of rocket, rocketness. All right, well, thanks to everybody. Thanks yeah. to all of our sponsors. And uh, thanks yeah. to everybody all around the world who was watching us today. We're very grateful that you watched. Thank you very much.